this is kind of where they've been at for the majority of the year. I'm going to disagree. I think this is the best optic we've seen. This win over New York is great for them because it's all about confidence. They've always had the ability. They still have the ability. Welcome to the Reverse Sweep Review Show presented by USA Insurance. I'm your host, Katie Bedford, joined as always by Enable and Pac-Man. And guys, we had an extra week off. I missed you. Are you excited? We're back. It's time. <laughs> Still a little, <laughs> little sleepy, Katie. But yeah, it's, uh, I've kind of missed. Oh, I missed you, Katie. John, sort of. <laughs> I was going to say some positive things about you, <laughs> but I guess not. Fuck that. <laughs> We're back. We're back. Everything's Glad right have, in the world. Glad to have Call of Duty back, though. It's been a while. He's talking shit about John. I missed you guys. But let's talk about the results. Mm. What got us here? Because the first week of stage five is done. Maybe no surprise. London and Paris and Seattle and Gorillas all had a bad time. FaZe with a 3-0 over London. Optic going 2-0 on the week. FaZe going 2-0 on the week. Minnesota was able to take down Gorillas. Thieves going 2-0 on the week as well with wins over London and New York. New York, kind of the big surprise here, right? Because New York, they are the team that went 0-2. They fell to Optic, they fell to Thieves as well. Thieves, that new lineup with John on the roster now. So kind of maybe the, the talking point of the week, if you will, the fact that New York just really came out flat. But let's start with Optic first, because Optic, they did go 2-0. One of those teams they beat was New York, that final series of the day on Sunday. Is this the best Optic we've seen so far, or are there smoke and mirrors going on? No, not the best Optic we've seen so far. I mean, I do think they look good, but this is kind of where they've been at for the majority of the year. They can beat all the teams that they should beat, but it's just about getting over that final hump, right? Like beating the top teams. New York, I mean, you could say they're a top team, Obviously, there's something going on with them. You can tell they're not on the same page now, but Optic has been a good team all year. So I don't think this is necessarily the best Optic we've had, but I don't think it's any worse than other other versions of it. I'm going to disagree. I think this is the best Optic we've seen other than the very start of the game when people were considering them the best respawn team in the game. Uh, that was the best Optic I mean, we saw. Okay, but that's so long ago that it's completely irrelevant. That version that's of the fair. team, anything that's happening back then, it's completely mm -hmm. irrelevant. I believe that 100 Thieves started out 4 0 or something with Don on the team. That's like, they did, yeah. <laughs> that might as well be a, a they did, they generation of life. But, yeah, so like that's completely irrelevant. Since then, though, Optic has been the same good team, like you said, but very middling. And I think that mm -hmm. this win over New York is great for them because it's all about confidence. They've always had the ability, they mm -hmm. still have the ability, but to pull out close a close S D win against them to really manhandle that team in both respawns. I think that's a really good thing for Optic. They showed us all what we know they can do, but I don't think that they believe that they could do it. And NYSL has been a top team this whole year. Like even if they had a bad week, they could easily come back and be a lot stronger than the, the version we saw this weekend. But still Optic has that win under their belt, that confidence under their belt. And I think that's really good for them going forward. I think this is the strongest they've looked and the most confident that they'll be going forward. My concern, though, with that is that we've we've said that on the show before, right? Like we've we've said that exact line about Optic. They beat some teams they should beat. Maybe they beat a team that's a little beaten down themselves, not in, not in top form. And we talk about that confidence and they've got confidence and everything's great. But it still feels to me like their their chance to beat a phase or a Dallas in current form or Toronto. I mean, they did again have a round 11 with Toronto, so they did go down to the wire. But their ability to beat those teams seems out of reach to me. Do you agree with that background or no? I do, but I would have said the same thing about NYSL before this weekend. We have no idea if they play up to the standard mm -hmm. that they played this past weekend, they could win those games. They could have close mm -hmm. games with those teams, and that's all you really need to be. You need to be in the picture. Usually when they play like phase of the world, that's not even close, right? So it's <laughs> they're not <laughs> able to clutch up. They're getting body bagged. So yeah. as long as they're there, they play like this. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I think that phase Toronto, Dallas are the favorites going into those matches, but we'll see. All right, well, then let's talk about New York. You mentioned them. Optic did beat them, guys. New York went 0-2 on the week. They lost 3-2 to Thieves, and they got swept by Optic. And there were, you know, tech issues, shenanigans galore, Hydra sprinting to scrap set up to be able to play for the final map, and a, a very long delay in the Optic match. You can put what weight into that that you will. So, Ian, do you think that major four and kind of issues with the seam not being there bringing in dustmate do you think that caused new york to lose their rhythm and they're still trying to get back into it or do you think the problems have been longer standing than just that you know what i think it's a mix of both because obviously with seam not being able to go to the major four they weren't able to practice with him for a while because i i talked to him on a pretty much daily basis like 
he was telling me, yeah, dude, it sucks because I want to play and that he does, he's not practicing. He's, there's not eights or anything like that. So not only are they kind of getting out of rhythm because now they're putting in time with Decimate, but also seems kind of out of rhythm because he's not getting the, right. those reps that he needs that every other team, every other player in the league is getting. But also, I'm, you know, in New York, we saw kind of the honeymoon period in the beginning and they looked really good. I saw a stat on, on the COD Reddit actually the, the other day. After they lost, I think it was to Toronto when they got 3-0'd, their record mm -hmm. from when they first picked up Hydra, it's night and day. Uh, they've regressed in every single game mode. And so I don't think this is necessarily just something out of left field. Seem not being able to play definitely hurt them and it, it showed even more how many issues they actually have. I mean, obviously, I think that the tech issues played a part in it, whatever. But I mean, at the end of the day, they still got to play every map and every round together. They got right? lucky, so, if anything. They yeah, had, they like, had defense for 11. Down to oh, they brought it back to a map five and... Yeah, and they should have had offense, lost. and and they were still, uh, and they should have had offense, and they were still up in the map five. Like right. all the excuses in the world don't change the facts of what was happening. People were playing fine, right? Mm -hmm. I believe uh, if anyone was struggling, it was Click. Yeah, you play like one and something. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> all the excuses in the world don't matter. Just they just didn't clutch up. They didn't clutch up. They didn't win. And whenever that happens, you see NYSL. I know they've dealt with stuff, but they're really good at going to social media right after anything happens and like crying. Just plain and simple and <laughs> just, just or facts. crying during a tech break or or, or crying after they what win. are you talking about after they lose. Who are you talking about i said nysl i'm not talking about anyone uh <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean that's NYSL. a kind of other and, water and, and obviously some list, of those and, uh, things on there are are legitimate right the things that they're mm -hmm. complaining about are true mm -hmm. but when things are going well it's it's like it's always so night and day like you just lost a close match that's it and it at happens. the end of the day, you clutch. It happened. It happened, mm -hmm. and it happens, and it's close. But you did, and the whole like this asymptomatic out of rhythm thing, true for sure. But then we also had an extra week, so then extra week of practice to get back in the rhythm, right? Like, if anyone's out of rhythm, like Slasher would have been out of rhythm. He didn't play for months. John was in the mm -hmm. challengers. You know what I mean? I guess that they always stay in rhythm. They play every every. Slasher damn builds day. robots, though. You know what I'm saying? He probably is locked quicker <laughs> getting back into it. <laughs> Bill's robot, Dra so he can angry Draza tweet is the, the definition of having to be out of rhythm. This guy doesn't know if he's going to play or not. He just shows up. And or like, right, or what up. gun he's got to use. what role he's going to use. Exactly. So things happen to everyone. It's like, right. but you just have to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great point. And guys, a quick reminder, Reverse Sweep is presented by USAA Insurance. They make it super easy to insure all of your stuff, like your rigs and gear, and they have your back. Eligibility restrictions apply. Insurance provided by United Services Automobile Association and its affiliates in San Antonio, Texas. So I want to dig into that a little bit more, though. So uh, New York, you know, excuses. Otherwise, this and that rhythm, no rhythm. Let's get down to the base of it. Do you think they can get back into challenging a grand final? Can they get back to a grand final? Do you have faith in that or no? Yeah. Pac-Man. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, I do. It's just, uh, they seem to be pretty momentum-based. If they start, if they figure out whatever's not clicking the same, what, what Ian was talking about, how they've regressed in these modes, I think they'll be right back. It's not like they ever fell off. This is their worst weekend in a while, right? The, I mean, they, they still managed games. to beat Florida on land with a fill-in, a couple bad games, and yeah, but at the end of the day, they're still one of the top teams in the game. Mm -hmm. They get it back together. They're scary. Right now, the top is the top is really tough with Dallas, yeah. Toronto, and Atlanta. You have to be on the same page to even compete right now. So once they get back there, we'll see. I do believe that they have that in them though to compete for a championship. They already proved it once, and I think that they can do it again. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's only two two bad games that we've seen from them realistically. And yeah, they could just be slumping, not in the ideal time. But it happens. Hopefully that's all it is because I would love to see them kind of be able to compete with the other top dogs. But like John said, they need to figure it out quick because now is where if you want to be a top team and actually have a chance of contending for a championship, you have to be firing at all cylinders now, like from now until the end of the season. And they're not there, but I got, I got confidence. Clay can get them all in, in check. They can get back to where they were at prior and then we'll have another team that maybe has a uh, has a chance at getting a championship they came close they did make a grand final before so we'll see if they can work their way back there but we already talked about them too guys they have to get their way through dallas and atlanta and toronto <laughs> dallas looking incredible LA of course awesome. bringing 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 phase uh to that map nine all the way to uh 
at round nine in that S and D at major number four. Dallas uh, really such a glow up on the land, continuing to carry that over now into online, uh, having a good show so far. Uh, kind of Dallas and Atlanta really kind of speed running those uh, those opponents this week, right? Easy sweeps. They didn't look like they were having too much trouble. How far do you think Dallas is behind Atlanta right now, Ian? It's tough to say because we we've mm -hmm. seen Atlanta throughout the whole year. Their floor is the finals currently. Uh, and we know how good they are. We know how talented they are. With Dallas, they, yes, they were in the finals. They took them literally to the distance when they played phase, but it's just too small of a sample size. Now they do look good right now, but I just don't think I could put any team in the same mm -hmm. tier as phase. Like I, I have yeah. to give respect to phase with what they've done this year. Maybe if we see Empire and phase go, go up against each other again, I'll have a better, I guess, a better gauge on if Empire can really take phase, but I just don't think any team can consistently beat them. Consistently, I think that's the key, right, Pac-Man? Like, you might be yeah, able to get yeah. a one-off in a best of five, is, but consistently. Currently, I do feel like Dallas is extremely close to phase, and I think that Toronto is extremely close to both of them. Like, I, I, don't, I don't like leaving Toronto out of that discussion, mm -hmm. but the thing is, Atlanta's longevity is crazy, right? Even when they fall off, it's not, it's like for a match, a week. I, I don't know. It's just not long, and we don't know if Dallas is able to sustain the level of play throughout the rest of the season, whereas to Ian's point, we're not really worried about phase falling off. Like, even if they don't play that well, they're still managing to clutch up and win, get to the finals. That's the thing that's hard about putting up, putting anyone up next to Atlanta. Just mm -hmm. no matter what, phase is going to be there. However, I actually do believe in this Dallas team. I actually think that they're going to go back to back and win champs. I feel like they're starting oh. to hit their stride at the right time, the perfect time. And I know it's to, it's weird to say because they just beat LAG. LAG is terrible, right? They're up like 200 to 10 or something like that in hard that play against did. LAG. But LAG's academy team also did that to LAG. So I have to look at it like, I have to look God. at it carefully. What? They did. They beat them 250 to like 19 or something like that. And a scrim. It was so long ago. We weren't thinking about it anymore, but you probably like. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> but. Blow it up, Trey, for picks, John. <laughs> that's been uh, to happen. But, <laughs> but at the same time, Dallas did what they need to do. They beat them so easily. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's what the top teams do. And that's what FaZe yeah. did. And that's what Toronto has done. To so the teams that they're just way better than, that's what they do. And they did it. They And they took care of it. I do feel like Dallas is primed to continue on that path. Mm -hmm. And when Dallas is on that path, I do feel like they have the players that can actually stand up to Simp and Ibiza. Shotzi was considered the best player last season. At least back in into his form it just they are the team to me with the most individual talent that can stand up to atlantis so if they're all on the same page it could be close just like it was in the last final i mean that's really the storyline right it, it was always phase and dallas and kind of that that rivalry that they had for so many grand finals and dallas consistently kind of taking down atlanta last year uh, i agree i think it's exciting at least to kind of have that coming back to the the end of this year to see dallas hit form and atlanta too i mean they're at the point now you look at some of these scores for the first week and yeah they're beating teams like London and, and Paris and Gorillas teams that they should be sweeping and they're doing just that. But Atlanta too, they're starting to work on maps that they struggle with. Maps that they're maybe not as uh, familiar with or comfortable with like Miami S&D. They don't play Miami. They don't really like Miami. And they're starting to use those teams now in these matches to kind of polish up those matches, those maps. And I'm sure Dallas is doing the same thing, right? At this point, when you're so far ahead, you're just taking the time with teams like Gorillas, teams like London and Paris to just polish up the maps that you need some work on. But let's talk about Thieves. Because Thieves, they brought in John. They've, I think, had more roster changes than huh. Series Seattle won this year. I'm not positive, but I think that they probably come out on top in that race. But John... Hey, they come out and they win. They win both their matches. They managed to take down New York and they do their thing. So talk to me about Thieves, Ian. Um, do you think this is the best version we've seen so far or do you at least have hope? Talk to me about what you think. I do think this is the best version of LAT. Um, not even necessarily from the series. I just think mm -hmm. when you look at the makeup of the team, this is the best roster that they've had throughout knowing roles and knowing like I guess uh, their team chemistry and everything, but they also start out 2-0. They got a huge win over NYSL, and yeah, NYSL might be slumping a little bit, but this that match was huge because mm -hmm. it's such a confidence booster. You don't want to make another roster change and start out getting 3-0'd, you know, getting smoked. So being able to clutch up, even though it did go that round 11, uh, was big time for them. And then versus the Royal Ravens, I wish they would have won it a little bit 
more like like yeah. i was it i was clean it wasn't clean yeah just a little bit more cleanly is cleanly a word <laughs> cleanly i don't know but regardless <laughs> it's Ian's word now the yeah but it's my word <laughs> i wish it was more cleanly though it, it, the, the wind was dirty katie the wind was dirty period uh but we'll take it Go, you know, 2 0 is huge for them. It's, it's new with John in the lineup. He was in challengers all year. So I'm I'm happy with the result. I just want to see them play other top teams to really understand how good they are right now. Do you agree? Good. Uh, well, I think this roster has the potential to be their best roster yet. I don't think you can say that because the one with TJ, Venom, and uh, they were ass. Draza. They were on the road to being a top three team, right? They were right there, and then they made a team change. And apparently, they were losing in scrims. So, what we saw in tournament play, which is a small or match play, is a small sample size in reality. They played and they were winning, but in scrims they would lose badly or something like that to the top teams. They weren't competing at a high level. So maybe this roster is better than that roster overall, and we'll see when it comes time. Uh, I do feel like. This feels like the final move for them, right? Like it, it 100 percent does, and I think that's a positive thing for all the players and everyone involved. Because now you could, now you just have to figure it out. Like this mm -hmm. is it. You could have said the same thing with the Kyler move. I mean, I think I did, but <laughs> yeah. obviously you couldn't, you couldn't foresee what was going to happen. You know, just weeks later. I don't even know if it was weeks later, but this one is it. And to pull out later. those two matches, even though the match versus London was tough, a lot tougher than it probably should have been. They still pulled it out, and I think that's really important for a new team too, because then you just just build up that confidence and that ice that you know that your team has the composure to actually close out those matches. All they lost was a surge, and for new rosters, we know that it takes some time to build up that chemistry to make sure that to that you're going to win all your searches or you know perform at a high level in all your searches. So that's not the worst thing in the world for them, because now they have some film to go look at and figure out what, exactly what they did wrong in those situations and see if they can if they can improve before champs. Yeah, uh, I agree, though. I, I think you got to stick with what you have now. It seems like so far the debut winning recipe. But yeah, I think uh, definitely important to stay with that. But let's get into our most clutch moments of stage five week one with Got You Covered presented by USAA Insurance. Level up your gear protection with USAA Insurance. So the most clutch moments, the play that really stuck out to you the moment in the first week. Guys, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Ian, I don't know if you want to kick this off, but what really stuck out to you? A player, a moment, a team, something. Katie, it has to be the round 11 between LAT and NYSL where Drazen and Slasher went huge. I just think that's mm -hmm. the clutch moment because this series was everything for them. You don't want to start off 0-1, like I said. You want to be confident in your team and to go up against NYSL while going into it, even though we know now after they might be slumping, Everyone was considering NYSL top three team, top three, top four team, right? They, they were amongst the best. So to be able to clutch up, especially when they should have had defense in that round 11, they end up having offense. Uh, it, it was big time play for them. Uh, I'm going to go with the uh, Optic game one versus NYSL, actually, because they manhandled them the entire way through. I think the final score was them winning by 50 points. But if you actually watch the map progress, Optic actually controlled the pace and the whatever everything that was happening the entire map optic played their best map of hardpoint against a top team that i've seen in a long time and i think that gave them the confidence they went on to win around 11 in game two and then they blew them out in the game three and i just think that that kind of win from optic can spur them to be that top team that we know they can be instead of just being a good team who's better than the, the lower half they can be that top team because that lower half at this point almost doesn't matter like all the matches that happen with non-champs teams let's say i almost disregard them unless like something ridiculous happens but i i most i mostly disregard them all those teams should beat those teams just the level of practice and preparation that you're going into should just be so much different but to have that level of of performance against another team that you're gonna have to beat if you want to go far in major five and champs is huge and i think that that game one out of optic was super crucial to their confidence and their development. Yeah, I think I got to kind of stick in line with Pac-Man here. Uh, I, I would go with Optic kind of as a whole in that New York uh, matchup because not only everything that, that John just said, but the idea too that they looked, despite some of my reservations that I have, they did look more in sync. They looked, at least even on their cameras, like you're laughing, you're smiling, you're talking with each other. It doesn't look like it's doom and gloom and silence 
which we've seen a lot of. So it just seemed like the general, the vibe from the team that you saw on camera did very much so translate to how they were playing together as a unit on the map. So I think at least for me, that's good news. That's good news, right? Because we talked about how their teamwork can struggle. So I think just seeing that was kind of my moment because who knows, maybe maybe they can really step it up beyond that. Let's move on to MVPs. Maybe your MVP is from Optic, maybe it's from another team, guys, but most valuable player of the week. Pac-Man, who are you leaning toward? Uh, easy for me. I'm going to go with Envoy. He had the best series he's had in a while, too. I think he had a 1.6 KD against against mm -hmm. New York. And then also the top damage player on the team. And he's the one that I think drives the team, right? He's the one that's mm -hmm. the most important to me. And when he's having series like that, obviously, it just looks so much easier for the team. And to do it against a team with such strong submachine gun play as New York has, I think it's a really good thing. And it's all about confidence at this point with a team like Optic. And I think that Envoy's performance was huge for them and big ups to him for playing so well not bad not bad now i'm boy did look really good this week i'm going lat again though katie with draza uh this kid's been okay. he's honestly been put in one of the hardest situations i've seen in a very long time with it you know they've went through so many team changes you don't know or he didn't know if he's in the starting lineup if he's benched if he's mm -hmm. running a main ar if he's running a flex if he's running a sub and he just finds a way to make it work. He played great in both series versus NYSL and London. And I, I just feel like he could do it all. He And he has done it all for them time and time again. So he's got to be my MVP. And I'm really interested to see how well he performs going into the last two events. Because I really think he can be considered amongst you know, top five player in the game if he keeps up his level of play. Honestly, Ian, I, I think I have to agree with you because Draza is someone that I've really liked and and talked up since I saw him in Modern Warfare when he was coming in and kind of making that debut at the very, very end toward champs. Uh, he's always seemed like someone who just had so much potential and also someone who within inter-team dynamics would be a personality that would not be an issue mm -hmm. for a team, shall we say. So yeah. I think to your point as well, when you don't know if you're a sub, if you're actually playing, what you're playing as, to be able to kind of take it with the grace and stride that he has speaks to him as a player. So I, I would have to go with Draza as well. But let's talk about LVPs least valuable player not quite so much praise here or maybe praise in just the worst way so ian uh, is is there a, a sore thumb this week uh should i go lag again <laughs> for the 25th they're already uh, dead uh, please um <laughs> look i'm going lag again katie but but hear me out they're the lvp because it's the whole team again because they still, they can't make champs anymore. Champs is off the table, okay? And this is, I don't have anything personal against any of the players, any of the management. In fact, I actually really like Ricky and Bevels. How is this the same team and how do you drop Chino and pick up Mental? You put Mental in the worst spot ever. They need to literally let the LAG Academy team play the rest of the matches. That's how they fix this and just see what players might be good. But it's just like, it blows my mind. They're so damn bad and they just are cool with it. Like I, there has to be some sort of issue internally that we don't see. Like there's no shot that they're just getting absolutely smoked and everyone a part of management's like oh yeah whatever like we don't even really care anymore i mean the issue i mean this at this point it's dead right like katie said they're dead they're dead they're you know pulling yeah. them with a stick yeah do but something there was a point when we knew this was gonna happen and they were still in eighth place or seventh place like they were still able to make champs had they done something but we we're like you know they're gonna get passed up and blown away like you could see it coming it wasn't yeah like and that they didn't Florida. make those moves Florida was creeping up and creeping up yeah we're like they're gonna get passed up you said that what, now, not, seven not months only ago they get passed up they got left in the dust overlap mm -hmm. but like okay if you're gonna if you're gonna put mental on the team which i really don't have that big of an issue with like if you want to see if he has the potential to be a future star in this league go for it but it shouldn't be for Chin. and honestly what ian said is a great point if you're gonna throw in the towel like that because Chin was playing the best on their team let's yeah. not get it twisted he was playing the best on their team I if you're gonna throw in the throw in the towel like that why don't you just give the whole academy team a chance bring them like, all why yeah, are you bring dropping them all chino up. to put mental in the spot mental had one of the worst series i've ever seen by the way like just, Wasn't just straight up he played he played terrible but he was put in the toughest spot he's put into a tough role on a bad team like it's it's just not gonna look 
great for him. I'm not. It's not trying to give him an excuse or anything, but it, it's just true. Why don't you let him play with the people he's been playing with that he's built chemistry with? If you're gonna, if, so you can see how he is or how these other guys are. Like, there's a reason why you have an academy team, right? Mox has been playing fine. He's been doing well in his career, like in general. Why not give him their their team a chance? I don't understand. LAG is just like an actual conundrum to me. It's so confusing. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Sheen didn't deserve that, and then Mental also didn't deserve that because mm -hmm. now everyone, now you're just like, well. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have it. Like you know what I mean? He was it's like, just, well, uh, "Oh damn!" Like, <laughs> look at who I'm. Look at my tough. situation right now. <laughs> well, no, Anyways. I think it is a good point though. Like you, you do need to start. I know it's the easiest thing to see is the actual players on the roster when people are chirping off their opinions on Twitter. But like, you do have to start looking at the coaches, the general manager, the people above that that are really making those top-down decisions and start kind of leaning on them to figure out what is going on so are grills your mv or excuse me <laughs> your lvp uh, as well back no, or did you have someone else no in mind? no no because I, I forgot they existed for a moment until ian brought them up uh, um <laughs> <laughs> i was i'm gonna go with mac mac mm -hmm. did not have a good week of play and i always feel like he has these wild ups and downs right there was a point where i think last stage he was the one leading the league and mm -hmm. multi-kills going crazy being the guy stage. that swing yeah fantastic and everyone knows this this top end ability that mac has but then this week he just didn't show it he played poor in both matches and honestly it hindered the team and i think that i don't obviously i'm not in the comms we don't know the situation but he needs to get hit to regain that individual form so that new york can actually compete like we we're talking about with those other championship caliber teams they need him to be that guy because he does have i think other than than hydra he has like that most the most explosive potential on the team clay's been really consistent in this game i feel like this is one of his better titles he's right. been constantly doing what he needs to do but he needs his teammates around him to really boost him up so he can go off and max one of those guys and i don't think that mac had that kind of series yeah i mean he definitely he definitely had a rough go of it um but hopefully he can get back into that upswing right like we know he's capable of it so hopefully uh, now that it seems back and and maybe they get back into their rhythm he can kind of find that comfort zone again uh for for myself lvp i think it's been alex for me and i don't agree with zed getting taken out of the roster for alex um he came in for him uh, I don't think Alex has been a net positive for London at any point. And so far, the results from him, he had, he had what, a 0. 0.68 versus Thieves and a 0. 0.54 versus FaZe. Like, I know FaZe is, like, the best of the best, but, like, I just, you got to give more than that to justify being on the team. And at this point, I, I don't see what Alex tangibly, tangibly is bringing to London that makes sense to me. So that's I like my that's I, I, I think that's fair. I mean, have they won since they've picked no, up Alex? I don't think so. Well, I mean, no, they're, 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 they're minimal wins, not right? That, not that they were yeah. spectacular when they no, had they Zed and Zapis, but they were better. Yeah, they were. They Even in their moments. losses, they were putting up, yeah, they were showing yeah. life. Which yeah, I guess and the lower teams is it just all went to shit, I guess. What you look for, yeah. I don't know. But apparently Afro is really talented and they love him. Afro, so. yeah, Afro looks solid. And from mm -hmm. what from what I've seen, yeah. Afro looks pretty solid. Yeah, I think he's been fine. But anyway, that was my LVP, guys. That's our LVPs, MVPs, moments of the week, and the rest of the show all wrapped up. For reverse sweeps review show, let us know what you think in the comments. How you feel? Do you think New York can bring it back? What do you think? Optic better than we said, worse than we said. Please let us know. But that'll be it. We will be back after the second week of stage five concludes next week.